Okay then. Well, welcome to the 21st episode of The Trans Agenda, a show in which we discuss trans news in an inclusive manner that expresses the full range of trans people's humanity. My name is Ethel Thurston, she, her, they, them, and I'm joined today by my guest, Jenna Belk, they, them. So welcome aboard, Jenna. Perhaps you could introduce yourself for the people watching. Hello. Um, I guess I'm just, at this point, <laughs> just a regular person who made some mistakes and I'm trying to rectify them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's absolutely fair. Like, that's, that's why we're here. Again, full range of trans people's humanity here. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully the audio is coming through fine through for, for everyone. So if you could let me know that it's coming through fine, that, that would be a great relief. I haven't streamed in, I think, over a year now. Um, so, you know, it's kind of getting back into things. Uh, the chat box was giving me a lot of grief. Uh, I managed to fix my camera because that, I used to be atrocious with the webcam. Uh, so yes, uh, hopefully everything is sorted. We of course have a bit of housekeeping to get through and then we'll start going through, I think we've got the reading list and then it's the short version of events and eventually we'll get to the questions and yeah, just share what needs to be shared. So today isn't our usual show, it's just an interview, no extra news segments. We're here to talk about the ACA and its history of tokenization and transmisia. Now, before we can begin, we'd just like to make a couple of things clear, starting with the fact that we are fallible and therefore we will make mistakes. If you notice anything we got wrong, feel free to message us during or after the show, and we'll be more than happy to update the description to include any errors. Likewise, whilst we attempt to compile a list of content warnings for the topics we'll cover, posting them to the very top of the description, which I forgot to do, um, that is that is on me. I have to actually, yeah, I will read them out now anyway. Uh, there's always the possibility that we may miss one or two. So as with the mistakes, if you think we're missing a content warning, feel free to suggest it so we can update the current list. With that noted, always prioritize the written list in the description over our spoken list. The content warnings for today's show are transmisia, misogyny, manipulation, gaslighting, and othering. Uh, also know that a link to the show's agenda, which includes links to our various sources, can be found in the description down below. Lastly, I'd like to thank our wonderful patrons who help us create these shows along with our fully referenced videos. Patrons such as Matthew Kovac, Gerrit Van Vorst, Hannah Banghart, Sosh Daniels, Flynn, and Higgins the Seagull. Okay, so that's the uh, housekeeping done. That's the housekeeping segment over. Uh, I see, so people seem to be saying that the audio is coming through. Sounds good. That is good. We like it when things work here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so additional reading, there's just a few resources I'm going to run through quickly. There's, of course, last week's video, which kind of acted as like a primer for this one. Uh, I won't get into the actual title, you can check it for yourself. I don't want the person involved to flag their stream. Uh, we're not really intending on talking about said person. Or maybe we will. I, I guess, <laughs> guess, guess you'll just have to watch to find out. Uh, but yes, if you want to see last week's video, you can do so. Go to the um, additional reading, find it there. You can also find a link to the transcript, which has a mirrored copy for those of you in the UK. Uh, on top of that, we have my 2019 video, Holy Kool-Aid Defends Transphobic Abuse and Roots Out ACA Dissenters, which kind of covered the election period, and we'll be getting into all that later. We then have Matt Dillahunty's Dishonest Defense of Rationality Rules Transphobia, another video that will be coming back here and there. Then we have the Death for the Atheist Community of Austin, Testimonies from Volunteers and Service Users, which is exactly what it sounds like. Testimonies, I and a few others gathered and we read them out. Um, so for accessibility reasons, so you can check them out for yourselves. We then of course have the two wonderful streams done by Kevin Logan, the first speaking with Tracy Harris, Jen Peebles and Claire Walner about the split within the ACA. Particular Tracy's opening, pe opening piece is, it's heartbreaking, it really is. Um, you can definitely hear her passion about defending the trans community and standing with the trans community. And it was really just heartbreaking hearing her say all this and like see how the ACA just kind of discarded her over it. So um, mm -hmm. yes, that's definitely worth watching. Uh, we then have the second one, which is talking with John uh, I. Coletti and Chelsea Rodriguez about the ACA transphobia row. Uh, one thing I need to know is that John joined the ACA in 1999. 
He volunteered in 2006 and joined the board in 2008 as the treasurer. Um, when he left, that was not some minor thing. This is someone who had given the ACA two decades of his life, you know, leaving in 20, uh, 2019. You know, a, a lot of people have kind of trivialized what happened. It's kind of downplayed. It. It's like John's presence and the fact that he left and he left in the way he did really goes to show just some of the shit and how heinous it got at the ACA. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple other points of interest is Chelsea mentioned the fact that she was physically intimidated or felt physically intimidated. This is around the 32 mark in that interview. Um, we then also have the really heartbreaking treatment of Phil Sessions, which was discussed at one hour mm -hmm. and eight minutes in. Uh, Phil, I just, again, it's another another person who I just, my heart breaks for him, you know. Yeah. Um, he was on the board and they removed him from the board, but they wanted to keep exploiting the good he did. And they effectively, <sighs> like, threatened him, like, y you make an issue for us and we're going to undo all of the good. Um, you know, he did incredible work for, like, black atheists. He was on top with, like, accessibility and, like, wheelchair ramps, etc. He was doing <clears throat> all of these community things, and they just held that at ransom. Um, there's another thing that we'll get to later involving the list. That's at one hour and ten minutes in. That will become relevant later. But, uh, yeah, do give those interviews a check if you... When, we, when you get the chance, I should say, uh, as they will give you a lot. Uh, we also have the last Godless Bitches um, with Claire Warner, Jen Peoples, Tracy Harris, Phil Sessions, and uh, Adria uh, Adri Adriana, sorry, Adriana uh, Buenaventura. Sorry, I did get that. I'm sorry about that. Um, give that a check out. That was kind of like, they couldn't say anything explicit, but if you watch that show, you'll see where the hearts were as they were leaving and how they felt about the whole Woodford situation. Um, so yes, that brings us round to the short version of events. I don't know if there's any, any like things that you'd like to mention, anything that you can think of really, uh, to highlight. Um... Well, there's just a lot that I'm going to be like, I, I was there for that and I was there for that. Like, um, mm -hmm. but the, the thing was that I was just so new to everything that I, I just, I did not understand what I was wit witnessing at the time that it was happening. And it, so it was just not until later that I was able to like start putting things together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's. We, we, we were coming back to like, especially Matt Dillahunty, how he kind of wheeled you out as like the new thing that, oh, you know, yeah, we, we understand that you're worried that all of the hosts are like kind of left ship, you know, so we have this new person and we'll, right. we'll be getting to that later. Yeah. Uh, hello to everyone. Hello, Stephanie, Book Dragon, Herbie, uh, Crisis Model. Um, cat lover, super upsetting because I respect a lot of the YouTubers in the situation until I found out. That is the same for a lot of people. Uh, I've kind of mm -hmm. become the hero killer. Uh, <laughs> like <laughs> how many people I get posting to my videos um, saying that I kind of killed their heroes, which like, you know, it, it, it does hurt oh, in some way. Like we, we like to look up to people because we like to think the world can be a better place and you think these people are doing that and then the truth comes right. out and it can be really heartbreaking. Um, I had a friend who was like in the midst of this, who their child was a particularly big fan of Telltale Atheist and got like a photo with Telltale Atheist at the Faithless Forum right before Faith, uh, right before Telltale Atheist went on to demonize me as a violent trans person who instigated violence at the Faithless Forum on par with the burning down of religious buildings, in spite of the fact that I wasn't at the Faithless Forum. Um, you know, just trying to get me banned from people's personal list of secularists they like. Uh, that's that's what I came out over. Um, so, you know, it, it's just, yeah. And that was about the time that I was starting to go to the ACA mm -hmm. uh, building because okay. I'd found people there that I that were my age, that were, you know, that I felt like I could relate to. And so it's like as the Faithless Forum, that Faithless Forum was happening, I was this quiet, observant baby atheist mm -hmm. who had no idea what I was witnessing. 
um, gang warily. I'm just going through a few comments and then we'll kind of move on to the timeline. Uh, this all impacted me badly at, at the time. I was already struggling with mental health and this added to the dark thoughts about unaliving myself. I'm really sorry about that. Um, and like, I, yeah, hope you, too, I hope you'll yeah. be able to get the resources and you know the support you need to help you through that. Um, you know, I, I know you're not the only, you're not alone in this feeling. Like, there's victims. I'm still getting messages to this day. Like, just a couple months ago, I, I got a message to my testimonies video of someone who joined Telltale and the ACA's Discord in 2020, so the year after all this happened, had no idea that it was completely unsafe for trans people, and they were hit with so much abuse and vitriol um, that they had a mental health crisis, and they didn't discover why. They didn't discover the whole background to what happened until uh, it was July, I think it might have been June, uh, of this year. Like, that that's how rippling mm. the impact was. Uh, people who were not involved, trans people who were not involved in the direct blast, are still coming to terms with what happened. So, uh, yes, I guess we should get to the timeline, starting with the thing that began this all, and that was Woodford's initial video posted on the 30th of March, um, the day before Trans Day Remembrance, so that was fun. Um, the athletic advantage of transgender women and why it's unfair, in which he made various statements and very pseudoscientific claims. I'm just going to quote two of the statements here to give you an idea of what he was saying. Uh, quote, and I am convinced that unless quickly rectified, this will kill women's sports. End quote. This is in relation to trans participation. He also stated, quote, and I don't want to see the day when women's athletics is dominated by Y chromosomes, but without a change in policy, that is precisely what's going to happen, end quote. If you watch my videos on the topic, you will see I bring these up again and again and again, and the reason is he never addressed them. He never talks about them, he never disowned them, he never stepped away from them, not in his apology video, which he opens by attacking his critics. Um, these statements were just completely ignored, he was allowed to wash his hands of them, even though they, they quite clearly are calling for action to be taken. Um, Can I say, so this is, this is when I was being introduced to this mess, mm -hmm. um, and I, I was pulled aside, and I was explained to that, that, Rash, that Stephen Woodford um, made a video that was problematic, and that he didn't know it was problematic until he posted it and that his friends had tried to get him to change it. But then before he could change it, this entire community came and started attacking him. And now he's his entire career is on the line and his entire reputation. And so um, I, I basically I asked to see the video. And so I just wanted to know, be known what my perspective was on the video at the time. Um, while I see very, very clearly now and and I did when I left, um, why that was problematic. I I genuinely did not understand why what he was saying was a problem. As a new atheist, I was questioning every single thing that I had learned about anything. And I was very, very confused about what was real anymore. What I, I felt like I found out that I was told that I live in a Neverland but I actually live on a planet earth and now I have to entirely learn how this, how gravity works. Like I didn't understand mm -hmm. anything. So I was like, I, this guy sounds like he knows what he's talking about. He sounds very passionate about it. And I don't understand why that's wrong. But what I, the fact is that the people who were trying to get him to, who were telling him what's wrong, weren't telling him what was wrong with it. Mm -hmm. They were just saying, it's wrong, you need to change it. So he, I'm not sure that he necessarily even knew what was wrong with it. Yeah. And I don't think anybody who was backing him knew what was wrong with it. And the fact is that if you're not trans and if you're not educated about this particular subject, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I you Just know, shut up. Just don't even, just, just stop, you know, just don't even go there. Mm -hmm. And that's what they didn't understand. Yeah. And that's why I tried helping them understand. I mean, like, in two minutes into my uh, first video response to him, I literally list the human rights that would be violated uh, in order to exclude trans women from sports. And I'll just read those rights out right, right now so you can hear them. Uh, if you exclude trans women from support, you'll be violating the following rights. The right to equality and non-discrimination, the, right uh, the right to the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health, 
the right to sexual and reproductive health, the right to work and to the enjoyment of just and favorable conditions of work, the right to privacy, and lastly, the right to freedom from torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatments mm -hmm. and harmful practices, and full respect for the dignity, bodily integrity, and bodily autonomy of the person. Um, you know, like these are one of, these are this is the first list that I kind of chucked out there in the, like the first two minutes to say this is a human rights issue. Let's deal with the science, and then I'll come back to the humanities because I knew if I didn't tackle the science first, getting Woodford's audience to listen was going to be right. impossible. You know, sadly, that's the thing. Like Tracy and Jen, especially on like the Call of Spitches show, but also the interview with uh, Kevin Logan, they were talking about how like this whole does science justify the just like the removal of these human rights is just kind of been skipped over to like, is the science actually there? Um, and I was like, yeah, I, I appreciate that. I'm glad that you, as cis women, especially Jen, who is like martial artist, mixed martial arts, uh, mixed gender martial arts, I should say, um, you know, she came out very like clearly like, no, there's no reason trans women are women. It's a women category. They belong no matter what, you know. Um, so like, I'm really happy that they from the start could do this. But for me as a trans person, if I said that from the start, that would have been immediately like a strike against me. Um, right. So I kind of had to start with the science first and like say, even if we give your assumption that if the science shows uh, unfair advantage on behalf of trans women, you know, we can strip them of human rights, uh, even giving you that for a second, the science doesn't show that. <laughs> you know, that's right. the argument I had to deal with until again, people like Tracy and Jen came out and wonderful thing i even said in i think one of my later videos like thanks to them saying this i can now point out that that is the second layer what was going to have to get through um right just talking about the science is showing that hey there should be a conversation here um he then needs to justify the stripping of those rights because you know when it comes to stripping of human rights you need extreme reason to do that and even then it's usually only temporary you know when you defend yourself from a person uh you can't keep like being violent towards them after the initial danger has passed, you know, um, that there is reasonable force, even like self-defense, etc. But mm -hmm. uh, we hadn't got to that conversation at first. Um, so, yes. Well, it, it, I guess as far as conversations that he shouldn't be having, he just I think that the question amongst all these new YouTubers and these career YouTubers was what conversations are you know, should we mm -hmm. go after? We want to go yeah. after the hard conversations. What's too far? And um, I guess it, it's not, it shouldn't be a question of what you have a right mm -hmm. to speak about. Because that's kind of how the perspective was like, yeah. well, I have a right <laughs> to talk about it. I have a right. It's like, yes, yes, yes. Technically you have a right, mm -hmm. but should you? Yeah. And it was, it was, it was treating the the, tra the human rights of trans people as a game was another thing. Exactly. Was, yeah. Exactly. The are, commodification are you of our struggles. To be... Exactly. Yeah. Um, Linda Danvers pointed out, I did give Wood for the benefit of the doubt. I did. I, I, I literally end my video of like, you know, prove me wrong about like my very tongue in cheek criticism at the start when he, like I, of the humanity section where I talked about his, his response. I, I responded to the quotes at the start and I said like, oh dear me, what does the alt light man say about, you know, professional athletic womanhood? What rules the day it's going to destroy Western civilization? Um, as I, mm. I, I even go like, how else am I supposed to respond to someone like presenting trans women as inherently threat? You know, like how else am I supposed to respond to that? And at the end I go like, prove me wrong about these remarks. Prove me like you're better than this sort of thing. Um, but yes, anyway, we're probably getting too bogged down into this. Maybe, but <laughs> is... I mean, it's just there's so much there mm -hmm. is all. It's just it's hard to parse through, you know, which what which important thoughts yeah. that I've had need to be said. You know? yeah. uh, someone who was not having any doubt about his perception on the video was, of course, Matt Dillahunty, who less than three hours after Woodford had published his video, replied to Woodford on said video, stating, "Quote." I'm not only okay with trans people, I love and support them and want a world where they're equal, safe, and not facing discrimination. That said, there's nothing transphobic here. It's about the science of athletic performance and, and the problem of how we make competition fair. 
perhaps each sport will need to change. Weight classes, more accurate categories than just men, women, X, Y, maybe tiered categories based on past performances like FM, IM, GM in chess would be better. That said, Joe Rogan may make some valid points, but he repeatedly slips into misgendering. Even listening as charitably as possible, he's killing his point with garbage. Like, he's a guy. And I would have followed, and I wouldn't have followed a clip from him with, and that's why I, because it can so easily be misunderstood. End quote. Just that last bit. He can't even come out and say, yeah, the use of Joe Rogan, fucking bullshit. You shouldn't have done that. He's a bigot. He's misgendering <laughs> people left, right, and center. He says it could be misunderstood. This is something I see Matt do plenty of times. Like he, he takes this aggressive idea of um, if you're marginalized and you critique him or something that he cares about or likes, uh, like he does the whole, oh, you're taking offense. You know, I'm not causing offense. You're taking right, you're offense. To be you're offended. misunderstanding. <laughs> you know, it's all yeah. about the trans community and how it's their fault that Woodford right. didn't know Jack Shear about what he was talking about. It's just so sensitive. <laughs> it's just like, this comment was not, you know, at an arm's length, like, okay, Woodford fucks up, but I, I know he's a good guy, he's going to fix things, so like, you know, give him a break. This was full-out support for everything Woodford said in that video. You know, there is no criticism of what Woodford said, merely how it might be misunderstood, you know, his usage of Joe Rogan. So... I can say that Matt Dillahunty publicly defended, no, sorry, supported, he publicly supported calls for trans women to be stripped of six fundamental human rights. He publicly supported incitement for violence. This will become important later as we see as we get further along. Matt, Matt changes the narrative. He has since deleted that comment. Uh, you can see a archive copy of said comment on the video response to Matt Dillahunty. He has since seemingly deleted that comment as he started changing the narrative to, well, we all know Woodford's original video was like terrible through and through, uh, but like we were talking and helping him. We'll come back to that in a bit. Mm. Um, <laughs> so that was the initial thing. Uh, my video response goes out and like Woodford does this wonderful thing of like saying I couldn't watch past six minutes in your video, you know, um, because you're like being so mean to me. It's like literally when his video went out, he complained about people not watching past the first seven minutes of his video. So it's like what hypocrisy it shows how Woodford views his time as being inherently more uh, valuable than as a, than a trans person. Um, so that was interesting, uh, but eventually we came to a sort of uneasy truce. Uh, he went off to the faithless form, I was just kind of, I gave him all the space he could need to fix his shit, because people were like, okay, he said he's gonna fix it, you know, give him time, he'll fix it. Uh, and there was actually a lot of people giving me rewards, I started getting a lot of invites, I was very insular from the, like, secular community, like, Sometimes I commented to other people's videos, but I was still very insular compared to a lot of other people. Suddenly I was, I was the hottest shit on the block, you know? Uh, when people thought that, oh, you know, they're a good trans person, they're, they're just gonna let Woodford do whatever he wants. They, they were more than happy to like, you know, rub my back on that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, of course, Woodford appeared on the Atheist Experience. Uh, he appeared twice once on the 29th of April, which I believe is the instigating event. Uh, that said, it might be the 28th for you because, of course, I'm in India and I'm 12 hours ahead. So when I check YouTube's like time dates and everything, it's all set to Indian dates. So like, yeah, it, it, I had someone point out that my dates were wrong. It's just because India, Indian standard time. That's it. Um, might I add about that? Oh, that sure. yeah. The reason that... Um, there was a push to have him on. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming from what I saw as somebody who spent a lot of my free time at that building um, was that there was an interest in their following and their, their YouTube followers because the cosmic skeptic was there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And having them both on would be good for the ACA. Mm -hmm. That was the perception at least. Yeah. Um, and like, 
Claire Wellner in particular, I'm going to note. Claire song. called them on it. <laughs> Claire called them out on it before Woodford went on the show. She like, hey, you realize that the LGC Plus no. community is, is tense right now. Um, right. You know. She basically pulled Jamie aside because Jamie mm-hmm. was the president and basically explained to him the harm. Yeah. And, and that's where the first statement came from. Oh, no, it's not that um, this is before the first statement. This is before Woodford has even appeared on the show. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Sorry. Well, but the, I mean, it came from her, from her, but we'll get to the she, first she statement. She was the first person yeah. to be like, no, this can't happen. Mm-hmm. Don't don't even do it. Well, she, what and she said is Matt, it, it was specifically she told them that you need to either address it on the show or just avoid it, which would later come yeah. back to like the statement. Um, sorry, you continue. Uh, yeah, but there, the ACA's policy was if if you question it, basically whatever you're unsure about, just don't touch it. Just don't even uh, talk about mm-hmm. it. But again, since they were only in town for Faithless Forum, mm-hmm. there was a push from the inside, from Matt and Eric yeah. at the time, they were buddies, mm-hmm. to have them on because they were there and that, you know, yeah. it was just, it would be good for the, everyone. Yeah, uh, Matt Dillhunty specifically told Claire and uh, Jamie that he, he, like, don't address it. I think the other show he did was Talk Heathens. He did Two Atheist Experience, I think, uh-huh. one Talk Heathen show. Uh, he told mm-hmm. the people on Talk Heathen, don't talk about it. I will talk about it on Atheist Experience. Mm-hmm. And then he never did. Like, mm-hmm. he, he told them, don't talk about it. So they wouldn't. He could control it. And then he didn't, because that seems to be his plan from the start. Um, he mm-hmm. just wanted to do anything he could just to smooth over Woodford's appearance on the show. And keep uh, in mind, at this point, I don't think the board had any idea that this was even going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The board, the board, the people that were on the board didn't spend all of their free time hanging out at the ACA with all the all of us, all, you know, mm-hmm. insecure, lost you know, people like they, they would come for a lot of them would come for their shows and kind of hang out a little bit after and socialize a little bit, but they, they didn't spend all of their time there. Yeah. Yeah. I I remember, I think as uh, Chelsea had to like drive an hour and a half to each meeting, like that's one way. <laughs> um, right. She was really, she was really pulling it. Um, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, but again, like Claire was very explicit that this either needs to be dealt with on the show or it doesn't happen. Matt reassured her, hey, I'll talk about it on the Atheist Experience, and then he just undercut her, which is really mm-hmm. interesting when you look at, like, his reasons for leaving the ACA, and how he felt like the ACA was, like, setting him up to fail, uh, and how right. they were undermining him via, like, a lack of communication stuff. Um, but we might talk about that later. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> We've got a lot to get through. Yeah. Um, in response to the Woodford video, Various trans people uh, write to the ACA or call in to complain, like noting, hey, he hasn't solved his issue yet. We're not particularly happy about this. You know, why was this allowed to happen? Why was he allowed to have uh, a a platform here when he is still pumping? Like the video was up, unchanged, unedited. Uh, There was nothing even marking that it had a mistake. Still pumping out pseudoscience as justification to strip trans women of six fundamental human rights. Um, so yeah, and just to be clear here, because people love to claim that I I was like, I was like maneuvering everything. I was puppeting everything from like behind the scenes. I had no idea Woodford even went to the ACA until the first statement came out. Um, this was not orchestrated by me. These people were trans people, members of the trans community, acting on their own, you know, motivation. You know, they're acting on their own autonomy. Like this was a spontaneous outcry. That's how big the issue was. So, like, if anyone tries to frame it as well, it was just Ethel like pumping the hate on everything. No, that that doesn't mm-hmm. match up. Um, how how did you like? When did you hear that like the trans community had complained about Woodford, or did you hear about it before the statement, or was it only after the statement that you heard about it? Um, um I had heard about it before, and I'd heard that Matt was going to address it, and then he didn't. And I'd heard mostly it was Claire doing a lot of uh, talking about it because she was the one who probably spent the most time there. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was she was really doing everything that she could to try to explain it to people. But then you had people like me who were like, I just don't understand, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um. So I definitely kept the the waters muddy, you know, for because I accepted that, you know, mm-hmm. I, I accepted I don't understand, and I thought that if I just keep my mouth shut, then I'll just stay out of trouble. 
Right. Um, so I just tried to do a lot of listening, but I was, the problem is that th this community made me feel like I was listening to the right people mm -hmm. and I was listening to the wrong people. <laughs> yeah. Also, I just want to say hi to Tracy and uh, Jen, both turned up. So uh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I'm trying to keep out my eye out for any of the crew. Uh, so yeah, um, again, do watch their interviews with Ken Lo uh, Kevin Logan after this. If th they're great interviews, like there's not a minute wasted or anything. Uh, so yeah. Right. Um, so of course the board called an emergency meeting to discuss the issue because they were still getting complaints in. Um, and this is during which they wrote an official statement, which seemed to be heavily based on what Claire had said previously. Um, Chelsea was the one who kind of actually like put the statement together and wrote, wrote like drafted the majority of it. Um, including the part where she notes that Woodford had published multiple transphobic videos, and we will get to that in a second. Um, so, you know, they wrote that, the board read it, the board passed it by a vote, and they then published it to the ACA social media. Uh, the core of the statement was a statement on solidarity with the trans community in face, in face of the violence that they suffered. Uh, the statement that they, again, should have either A, addressed it on stream or held off having Woodford appear until he'd fixed the issue. Uh, one or the other, fine, and that, that would have been great. Um, and there was kind of a mixed reaction from trans people. Some people, like myself, were fairly fine with it. I will acknowledge that there were a couple of people who still felt like it didn't really address enough. Um, but largely from the trans community, at least the one that I was hanging around in, they seemed to be pretty happy with that statement. Same was not said uh, for Woodford's audience and Woodford supporters at the ACA. Um, did you see when, what went down with Woodford's audience? How much of that were you aware of? Uh, um, they were outraged. <laughs> they were basically saying that the ACA was just throwing them out to dry mm -hmm. because because they didn't want to get their hands dirty. And so now they needed to get back at the ACA. Yeah. Uh, Tracy, we will be coming back to that comment about Matt's uh, girlfriend later on if we have the time. <laughs> uh, I've got the exact oh. quote for that. Um, yeah. Again, so much of it, so much of like why he left the yeah. ACA is just him describing all of the things that he taught the ACA to do. Um, so yes, Woodford's audience was absolutely vile. They started coming not just after you know board members, but the moderators attacking them with just a torrent of not just trans music, but also homo music, uh, ableist, racist, sexist abuse, just everything that they could throw. Um, there was one comment that actually I I heard about whilst going over the streams um, and that was a comment in which someone posted to the ACA social media uh, forums, this is I think further late on when they kind of died down, um, an article of a trans woman who had been murdered and someone responded to that with, that's a guy, or sorry, mm. it's not a woman. Um, that was on the official ACA forums, even after it had been reported to moderators who were going around deleting anything critical of the ACA oh, or yeah. Matt Dillahunty, that was on there for nine weeks. Uh, it was only yeah. when the walkouts posted pictures of this to Twitter to call it out that suddenly it vanished. Like that gives you an idea of just how vitriolic and bigoted and disgusting this stuff was. Um, yeah, so this was, I guess it's uh, um, important to mark that this is kind of around the time that, so a, a lot of the moderators mm -hmm. um, were starting to walk out. Yeah. And this was around the time that the new head mm -hmm. moderator mm -hmm. and all the way up until my leaving supported somewhat transphobic comments because we have to allow some discussion yeah. And so it basically just to kind of give a little preview at the end here, it, it kind of came down to me asking, well, how much is allowed? Mm -hmm. And and this person just saying, well, however much I decide. Yeah. So it was just absolutely that's, that's that horrific. Uh, a lot of the moderators actually went on to develop various mental health problems as a result of this or aggravated pre-existing mental health problems. There was a mass mm -hmm. walkout by the moderators. They formed a small uh, private Facebook group. It was private at first, and then it would go on to become the Progressive Secular Alliance and go public. 
um, but it was private at first. It was just pretty much a triage tent of like everyone who was leaving the ACA. They could go there. They could talk about their issues. Uh, some people talking insomnia. Or there was suicidal ideation, and like just how do we help each other? You know, get the resources we need, sort of thing. Because again, this was this wasn't a group that was torn apart by transmissive. This was a community in the most literal sense of the term. Again, going back to John, he joined the ACA in 1999 and he, he felt like he could no longer support it in 2019 because of the transmissive. That is how bad it was. 20 years, 20 years he was part of that community. And the fact is that it, that, that, I mean, it had been going on for all that time. It's just that it wasn't in anyone's face enough mm -hmm. To address it yeah. and now that there's actually trans people coming to the community saying this is bad stop it then they're like well but if, if i accept that it's bad then that just means mm. that we're bad people and we're not bad people so you have to be wrong yeah. um and all of this wasn't helped once again by matt who very publicly came out right. and attacked the uh, the statement saying that it was factually inaccurate uh because it noted that woodford had videos plural that were transmisic. Um, by this point, like we we trans people had already shown that yes, videos plural was accurate. Um, Chelsea, who again was like the pen on this, using the ideas from Claire, um, she later confirmed that like she knew about two other videos that Woodford was very transmisic in. There is a Jordan Peterson video and there's a Ben Shapiro video. I will be covering both of these in detail actually in next week's video, which is all ready to go, all subtitled. It's an hour and 50 minutes long um, because it, it's necessary information to understand uh, Levi's emails in regards to this whole situation. The Jordan Peterson video has Woodford opening up saying that he understands why people idolize Jordan Peterson for his defense, uh, defense of free speech and biological fact. And then later on, when repeating this claim, he cut out a photo of Jordan Peterson so he could have, a again, a photo that he cut out. He spent time clipping this out of Jordan Peterson saying, you're not an attack helicopter, as he talked about what he agreed with Jordan Peterson on. That is like how flagrant and bigoted he was. With mm. uh, Ben Shapiro, he used a bunch of clips from a single video. Um, all of those clips came from, and like, all those clips came from a video titled Ben Shapiro Destroys Abortion and, uh, sorry, Destroys Transgender People and Abortion Arguments. Um, Woodford goes out and explicitly states that he doesn't agree with Ben Shapiro on abortion, so what is left? It also helps that the clips that he shows of Ben Shapiro are Ben Shapiro making the same attack helicopter comment only about age instead of, you know, an inanimate object. Um, it's the whole why aren't you 60 argument, which Woodford used as a rhetorical device in his videos on sports. At one point, he goes on about how uh, if we allow trans women in sports, then we should allow, you know, uh, the mountain from Game of Thrones to play against senior weightlifters, you know, because age you know, just identifies a different age sort of thing. Um, so again, there were multiple videos. Trans people have provided these. I even remarked on the Ben Shapiro one in my first video by my um, unrehearsed emotional college students uh, remark during the, uh, the section on hemoglobin. So like, this wasn't hidden. This was known, and Matt still decided to promote the lie that it was just one video. You can't judge a man for just one video. Um, so yeah, uh, sorry, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. I just kind of went on a rant. <laughs> No, it's uh, okay. It's okay. There will be plenty, of, plenty. I'll have plenty to say. As well. this, this is just group therapy with an audience. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's just there's so much that hasn't been. I, yeah, I guess we're, we're just sharing what we needed to say. It's catharsis, you know, and there is a catharsis yeah. here. Um, and it's just so much to talk about. Uh, yes, is there anything you wanted to add? Well, just that I I just I just want to be clear that I, I was so confused. Like, I, I knew that there that this place claimed to be a safe place for trans people. And that's part of why I felt like it was a good place because of the claims that it was making you know and they'd say that like on every show we support trans we are we're, we're lgbtq allies or whatever you know mm -hmm. um and so i guess that it's 
to me, leaving my background, which I had no idea even at the time, was quite um, abusive. I thought that, well, since this is better, it's good. Yeah. You know, anything, obviously, that's better is obviously the right direction, at least. So this is obviously good. Yeah. Um, so that's just something that I didn't understand. Um, that's fair. Like, you know. It's, it's, it's different it's, different colors of abuse yeah. you know it's a shit situation to be in and like calm yeah, and it's scary it's... because you I've, I've lost my entire community once already mm -hmm. yeah you know uh, and so it's like am i am i gonna leave this one too when i feel so safe here when i feel i felt mm -hmm. safe yeah. right that's really all that mattered at the time mm-hmm um, but then once, you know, I started learning things, I started to understand why, <laughs> why other people matter. <laughs> yeah. well, it's like, it's, it's good that like, we're able to like, review everything and come to a conclusion on your own without any input from me before anyone accuses that I've now puppeted another person to um, speak <laughs> on my behalf. No, and see, that's the thing is that you were introduced to me as just this really angry, spiteful person who who was just really, really good at at saying things in a way that makes you believe them. And and I, I, I was prepped, mm -hmm. you know, and so, again, I was in a state of mind where I was already questioning literally everything I'd ever been told before. And then here I am with these people that make me feel safe and are, are making me feel loved. And like, I found a new family that are telling me, be careful, don't trust this person. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm like, okay. It's, it's quite you interesting. Know? Cause like they, they always convey me as this like emotional manipulator, cult leader sort of thing. It's like, have you seen my discord server? It is about as hands off for me as it can get. Uh, I am very introverted, <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's very hard for me to come out and like bond and like communicate with other people and everything. So like the server is, it's there. If you want to talk to me about anything or you think I've messed up, it is there. Uh, that's about it. Um, which yeah. I think is quite funny because like recently discovered that someone has been sending spies into our server. Uh, we know this because someone like from that person's audience has come and shared a certain document with us uh, showing that they have spies in us. So it's like, mm. I hope you're getting your worth. There is absolutely nothing out here. Um, but yeah. Um, yes. Uh... Well, then I guess the, the election was coming up. Yeah. And I was being prepped for that as well. And I didn't know it. Okay. By this younger, this younger millennial YouTuber crowd that wow. was making their way in. Like, and when it's something that I, this, this is notable. Mm -hmm. I did not notice it at the time it, that slowly it started to come together, that all of these people were working together. Like yeah. I yeah. didn't understand that Eric and Thomas were roommates mm -hmm. this entire time. Yep. And uh, who paid for that room? Uh, I'll tell you. It was I have Friedel, no idea. Jonathan Friedel. John if, if, oh if, if my you're, god, if that you're, doesn't surprise me. If, if you're that a long viewer of mine, you'll know who Jonathan Friedel is and what fucking hate I have for him. <laughs> yeah, he's paying uh, mm -hmm. Thomas and Drew. Yeah. yeah. And they're best friends. And yep. so it's like, I'm coming in thinking that these people are just happening to meet each other and they just happen no. to all, you know, <laughs> I'm just I, thinking it's all, you know, coincidences. And it's like, no, they all know each other. In 2018, I was added to a Discord server with all of these uh, YouTube personalities, which I didn't use because, again, I'm an introvert. I didn't have my own Discord until I think 2020 is when we finally set up. Uh, Levi pressured, like, pushed me to set up a Discord server as just like a communication tool because you can't rely on like sites like Twitter and YouTube has a weird messaging system and everything. Um, so, you know, it's just like... Yeah, I got added to their group and it was like, I only realized when I logged back into Discord in 2020 that I was still part of this group and I could see just how much these fucking people networked with one another and just how much they were talking behind my back. Because I think they'd completely oh, forgotten yeah. that I was in the group. Oh my God. <laughs> but by this point, everything had already died. And so I was just like, okay, I'm just getting out of this group. I, I'm just leaving. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. 
Of course, the backlash and push from people like Dillahunty and uh, Jamie Boone, acting on behalf of Eric, uh, they just kept going that, hey, we need to attract the original statement, you know, we need to damage control, we need to apologize to Woodford. Um, Jamie Boone called in uh, Shannon Q to help write a clarification for the board, a clarification which they demanded was voted on before they were shown it. That is something that was uh, pointed out in the Kevin Logan streams. Uh, like, John like refused. I'm not going to vote on a statement I'm not even allowed to read before I voted on it. Hmm. Um, but they're like, no, we've made this. Shannon Q and I have made this. Uh, you're going to accept it. Um, now, it didn't pass. Uh, but Jane was told like like you can post it on your own thing as like explicitly your own statement and how you feel about it. We can't control how you like talk about the stuff. Um, and he went ahead and then published it as the board has retracted its original statement. Here's the replacement. Uh, later on, they added an apology to Woodford, but they just like edited it on top and tagged it in to make it again seem like Woodford was um, like the board had apologized to Woodford. There was just so much, like, shenanigans going on with this. Um, oh, I should probably mention mm. one thing before, like, the moderators left. The, this is the original moderators. Before they left, they actually called for an emergency meeting with Eric to, like, hey, we need support. Can you support us? Eric just blew them off. Um, you know, so that there was no attempt to really fix the things with the people who were suffering most. Um, mm. yeah. Gen Peoples, after 2019, the board members were professional atheists and were using the ACA for dollars and for promoting their own brands. Again, we see this with Shannon Q in how she was called in. She was either paid as a consultant to, like, talk over the trans community, or she volunteered her time. I don't know which is worse. But then you see, after all the ACA hosts walk out, Shannon Q suddenly gets a spot on the um, atheist experience with Matt Dillahunty. Uh, and before her, they would they refused to put anybody on there that wasn't Austin based. Mm -hmm. But yeah. for her, they suddenly yeah. found an excuse. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, people were using the transmissia to line their own pockets. Um, and mm -hmm. it's really fucking. She brought it again, nice. brought a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> she brought a fan base. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. Uh, I'm just I'm going down my list. I've jumped a few points here. Uh, da, da, da. Yes, of course, Jamie Boone posts the anti-trans statement as the board's official position, which resulted in a number of board members resigning in protest. Again, they felt like they'd been undercut. Um, so, yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Um, that's when the ACA board elections arrived. Literally the day or two days after. I'm not sure because, again, India Standard Time, like, I've been looking at, like, times direct from documents and I get the wrong times because of Indian Standard Time. <laughs> but then, like, the election dates were, like, published, so that's what I used that date for. Uh, but literally right. within a couple of days, it's the ACA elections. Um, and there were a few stragglers, like John, who was like still like hopeful that maybe we can come back from this, and he arrived at the AC election, and it was an absolute fucking <laughs> farce. Um, they expected oh it God. to be like one hour, they're going to vote Woodford supporters in, that's going to be it, it's going to be over. The election ran for five hours. Yeah... The reason being, Thomas Westbrook and the people that he turned up with were grilling the um, anyone that wasn't on their pre-selected list. And we'll get to the pre-selected list. Oh, we'll get to the list. Pretty much grilling anyone not on their pre-selected list by demanding if they ever supported, um, if they did or ever supported the original ACA statement, which of course is a statement of solidarity with the trans community, and just raking anyone who said anything but no over the coals. It was a spectacle. It was designed to shame and like destroy the old order, as they probably saw it, you know, uh, before bringing so, in the new. Sorry. Sorry. No, I just. I, so, so this was the point where I had never seen an election before. I had mm -hmm. just started hanging out at the ACA a few months before this. And again, I said, like, I was prepped, <laughs> like, I was told about how cool the election would be and how, how great it is that mm -hmm. just anybody can vote. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and the thing is that Eric pulled me aside and said, let's go for a walk. 
Mm -hmm. And I was just completely blindsided because I'm thinking, oh, how sweet, you know, somebody who wants to go for a walk rather than just sit and eat. And this is so nice. I'm just thinking about this walk. Mm -hmm. And then he pulls a list out of his pocket. Ah, he's talking about the list. Yeah. And he's like, this is who I'm voting for. And I'm thinking, okay, like, are, and I'm like, I'm wondering, like, is he implying that I should vote for these people too? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, clearly confused. I'm just like, oh, 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 okay. And he's like, yes, yeah, so who are you voting for? And I was like, ah, I don't really, I don't really know yet. Yeah. But, I, you know, I'll figure it out. Uh, Graham, and, keeps, I was like, go on. Uh. No, basically, I just, this was a, this was a key point in me beginning to trust Eric. Mm-hmm. Because how he reacted was going to determine whether or not I was going to trust him in the future. Yeah. If he was going to try to convince me to pick anybody, I wasn't going to. And I think that he could tell that mm-hmm. because I told him very, very firmly, well, I'm just, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'm going to vote for who I'm going to vote for. Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't push back at all. And that made me trust him. Mm-hmm. And I even said in this conversation, if something goes down, because he'd been coming to me saying that people were being pitted against him, people were attacking him online, people were attacking, blah, blah, blah. All Everyone's against me, Jenna. And I was like, well, you're the one that I've been talking to, and you're the one who's been helping me through a really hard time, and you're the one that makes me feel comfortable and safe. So whatever happens, mm-hmm. I'm Team Eric. Yeah. And anybody that knows any, anything about psychology knows that when you take on that kind of mindset going forward, it's really hard to change mm-hmm. that yeah and so i just became team eric from that point on as for the list being used publicly um this is probably important for graham who keeps asking us like this why eric left uh, eric was one of woodford's most strongest uh, like people supporting him uh, a lot of what jamie did jamie did on eric's like trust his trust for eric Mm-hmm. Um, at the elections, mm-hmm. uh, I think Don was uh, late, so Eric was going to stand in his place and like answer questions and all this as as if he was Don. Um, and then someone, in a very rehearsed manner, at least according to those who are present, uh, this is in John's in, uh, in like Kevin Logan's interview of John and Chelsea, um, in a very rehearsed manner, someone in the audience asked, "Well, who would Eric? Uh, sorry, who would Don vote? For, uh, who would Don vote for?" Uh, as like their perfect board, at which point Eric pulled out the list and read off the names on that list, the names which would go on to become uh, voted in. I think it was Dan. Was it? Okay. Might have been Dan. Oh, it's Dan. Yes, it is Dan. I misread that because I was talking about Dan Because Dan was again... Yeah. No, it's okay, because Dan was another younger YouTuber Mm. in this, in the kind of in the group. And that's the only reason that they thought that they could explain why they would have a list of who dan was already going to vote for yeah Yeah. uh and that's i think that's the same list that eric was like showing you um yeah exactly so that's why it was weird like eric pulls out this list and he's like Mm -hmm. i know who dan's gonna vote for and i was like that's really odd that that yeah that was (laughs) clearly rehearsed um yeah it's just to give off the impression oh you know I didn't say you should vote for these people, but since someone in the audience is asking, right. you know, it's a con man move. That 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 is right. it's a plant. I see, I see the a person lot of the eyes. audience was a plant. It's, it's in it's... the audience. I see a lot of eyes narrow and a lot of suspicion, and I'm like, what's happening right now? I, all I could see was that something was happening, and I yeah. had no idea what, what it was. Uh, yeah. So um, after that, like even people like John again, John being with the ACA since 1999, just couldn't like. Oh, before that, there was one more important thing, and that is the election fraud. I keep forgetting the election fraud. Um, oh. Yes, the election fraud involving Drew McCoy. Uh, some of you may better know him as GM Skeptic or Genetically Modified Skeptic. Uh, in order to secure a position on the ACA board, you need to have at least one year of ACA membership. Uh, Drew went forward to like say, hey, I'm, I'm you know, running. Um, <clears throat> John checks the list to see that, hey, does he have the required membership? No, there's no evidence that uh, Drew McCoy ever had valid membership with the ACA. It hadn't lapsed, uh, he just never got it. Now, he brought this up to Jamie, and Jamie was like, oh, no, I was there. I remember, like, when we got him membership and everything. I, I, I you know, trust me that, that, that Drew has definitely been a member for more than a year. Um, so John, like, He's like, okay, this is a guy I've worked with, I trust, you know, I'm going to accept this for now. 
and I'm going to do what any treasurer does, because of course any membership is a paid membership, so he can just go back and look through all of his receipts dating back years, just to try and find evidence that Drew McCoy had paid at some point, right? <laughs> Couldn't find it. Couldn't find any evidence of that, and when he brought the issue forward, it was just hand-waved, um, you know. They'd brought Drew mm. in. Drew was going to run without any membership. And it's important to note this, because you might think, oh, that's just one of those archaic rules that they never apply or anything. The year before, a woman had run, uh, you know, for board position, but she only had four months. Um, so she had actual membership, she only had four months. And she wasn't allowed to run, because it wasn't the 12, and that was the rules, and everyone just moved on. Um, when the cis guy comes forward and just has no membership whatsoever... With a following. With a following... <laughs> Suddenly, the rules don't matter anymore, you know? Um, so, like, there was... It wasn't just the one thing. There was so much shady shit going on that night. And, and they didn't even really go to the meetings. <laughs> yes, he, like, also, they had I think mass he resignations. One meeting. They had mass resignations yeah. after. Um, yeah. Before this, there had been a few women on the board. There had been Phil, I believe, was also on the board at the time. So they, like, they, they had a more diverse board. Um, after this... Everyone was a, you know, white cis guy, except for one woman, and that woman, like, resigned the week after, uh, along with a bunch of other people. And the reason for that is, if these people resign from positions, the rest of the board can then vote in those positions by majority. Um, so to me, it looks like they secure those positions knowing full well that some of these people weren't going to stay here, but we just needed to deny uh, people critical of Woodford even the slightest chance that they'd get on the board. Um, because once they're on the board, it's harder to get them off, sort of, sort of thing, you know. Um, so yeah, it was just... Yeah, John's books were in order. I, I, I agree. Like, And the fact that he had the devotion to go through years of bookkeeping just to check that really speaks to his like integrity. And again, mm -hmm. like the AC election, he, he just had enough after that a number of people just felt well this is the death of the aca um and they left and you know mm -hmm. it, it just left the aca a disheveled husk of its former self um people didn't just abandon it uh the godless bitches had its final show on the 15th of june 2019 again go watch that show they are very vocal in their criticism of people like woodford etc um just the whole group, and you can really feel the pain as they're saying goodbye. Uh, it's just... The whole thing was... Uh, it really is depressing. Like, when you know what the ACA once was, and it's like how it did help many groups such as, you know, LGB, uh, secular folk in the community, how it helps them. You know, mm -hmm. uh, people like Gen Peoples on the show were a positive representation for all LGBT plus folk in the secular community and just to see all of that just I won't say crumble but be pulled down it wasn't like passive this was this was an active thing you know right and while I couldn't say that you know every single person that's there you know is is bad or anything mm -hmm. I, what I could say is that every person that's there either stayed because they didn't see the harm or came since and may not have been given the chance to see the harm. There is also, like, there are other people, like, I believe Phil stayed for a bit to continue his work with Black Atheists, which I completely understand, especially with, like, how toxic right. in the US everything is for, like, Black people right now. Like, yeah, I, I, I have no ill will to people like Phil at all. Like, if you need to stay and get that money, get that money. Take that money away from the right. ACA and use it for something good, okay? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so, like... <laughs> It was just incredibly heartbreaking. And of course... We but were... opportunistic as well. Opportunistic, for many. yes. There was... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is when Matt Dillhunty came out and uh, forwarded you as a replacement for the Goddess Bitches. It's actually in one, oh, God. in one of the shows that I... Uh, not one of the shows, one of the clips I used from one of the shows in which Matt Dillahunty uh, talks about the issue. Um, you can see this at... Uh, 30 minutes into my Dillahunty response, you will see the clip I'm about to quote. Uh, in response to people stating, uh, sorry, in I'll just quote what he says. Matt states, quote, and you might be going, holy crap, 
That's like everyone except you and Don. Ha, huh, yes, which is one of the reasons we added Jenna. End quote. Like, this is this is him going about all the people who have left, Jen, Tracy, Claire, you know, and here's Jenna. Yeah. Here's our replacement. And the, and the way that he invited me to be on AXP was mm. I mean, so I'm in, I'm in the impression that I got a lot to learn, right? And like mm -hmm. I'm I'm all I'm all questions and just absorbing things. And he's like, hey, so do you want to be on AXP? And I'm thinking, I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, so, so am I going to, are you going to teach me things? Are you going to, you know, are we going to, am I going to take classes? Like, are you going to teach me the things that I'm supposed to understand for this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you want to start Sunday? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, a, what? Like, oh, I guess. I mean, if I trust you to know if I'm ready or not. So sure, I'll give it a try. And he's like, no, 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 we we need your your naivety because because that's what a lot of people can relate to. And you're asking a lot of the questions that they're asking and that's what people are drawn to, right? He's telling me what's good for the show. He's not telling me that I'm, he, he's not understanding that mm -hmm. asking ignorant questions can be harmful. Yeah. <laughs> he nice. just genuinely didn't understand that. And neither did I, obviously. Of course, uh, one thing I should probably clarify, um, if I'm, I'm correct on this, I hope I'm correct, uh, you weren't out as trans at the time, so it wasn't so much uh, presenting you as like a trans token, it was presenting you as, we realised we lost all of our, you know, women hosts, um, so like, you as someone who at the time was perceived as a woman were kind of presented to fill that void, uh, am I correct on that? Yeah, um, I, I think it was that I was young, that I was, I mean, I've been a waiter for almost a decade. So it's like, I've got a way with, with talking that I guess I, I appeared comfortable in the chair enough starting out. And I think it was the fact that I was younger and going to bring, you know, more millennial crowd rather than this, this old white guy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I was also out open with being, I, I didn't know that I was trans yet, um, mm -hmm. but I knew that I was queer and I was, I was open with that. Okay. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there was there was like again with not just you but also like Shannon Q and how quick that, mm -hmm. like she was pushed out. Um, they were quite clearly like, oh, we lost all of our you know women hosts, and it's not just that we lost women host, we lost women host over a cis guy claiming to talk in defense of women. Mm. You know, there, there's also that because like. Even when you go to like Matt Dillahunty's like defense of Will support for his video on the original video, it's like none of this makes any sense when literally none of the cis women are taking an issue with this. Um, it's just cis guys coming and saying, this is an issue, you must see this as an issue, and you must strip trans people of six fundamental human rights, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So for, you know, Tracy, Claire, Jen, everyone to leave, you know, especially Jen, again, mixed gender martial arts, all of them to leave, that was kind of a big blow in that whole narrative there. Um, you know, wh why are all these cis women not agreeing with Woodford and staying with the ACA if it, it was so noble in its intent, if you will? Mm -hmm. um, and then it just got nasty. Like, he noticed that the people that were yeah. interested in clips were interested in the most violent reactions. Mm hmm Yeah. You know, the hanging up, the cussing people out, shutting people down and just being rude. But mm -hmm. again, that's why I think I was there was to kind of balance him out yeah. because I was so, so considerate, so, so kind. Mm -hmm. And this is this is notable, not that I think that I'm just like a super kind person, you know, whatever. But they made a point to name me the nicest person at the ACA. And that's I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. um as far as why i left yeah um so we'll get to that but i just wanted to point and point out that that is how they chose to basically label me was the baby atheist who's the nicest mm -hmm. so nice of course the uh the quote i gave earlier of like matt presenting you as the replacement for the other host um, right that was mixed into right. him saying don't listen to the rumors out there uh, and like this is of course when the testimonies were starting to come out and everything and it's like he's literally telling people not to listen to the people who walked out and then we saw in the i think the first kevin logan show of tracy jen and claire uh matt very like aggressively came out and like attacks them 
for like sharing their personal experience, their reasons for leaving, telling them to like shut up, you know, stop being lying bastards and bitches and all that. And it's like he is he gets so aggressive when he can't control the narrative in the way that he's grown accustomed to. And he was so fucking abusive, as Jen mentions in the comments, um, he never attempted to talk to her and ask her about the reason she left. And yet he was kind of presenting this, oh yes, it was an amicable breakup, you know, some people went on mm. to different pastures to try different things, uh, and we're always open then to them coming back sort of thing. Um, and this is also when the... Uh, this is around the time that the comment got called out, you know, the one that was left on the... Uh, the Facebook group, I think it was the Facebook group, it was one of the social media platforms for nine weeks without being moderated. Um, this is when that was called out as well. And yet any post linking people to the testimonies of people who had left or the interviews immediately disappears, vanished, banned. Uh, many mm -hmm. of all of the moderators who, who left blocked, like immediately, even if they hadn't said anything, blocked, you know. It really. They wanted to shut. Down, they were very open about how much they wanted to shut down the conversation. Yeah. Um. I was. I was in the rooms, discussing a lot of that. Yeah, and like at the time, people like Kevin Logan and myself were pointing out how much like a church mentality this is, uh, specifically regarding like the Catholic Church and the idea of the Mother Church. You know, defend the Mother Church at all costs. You know, don't let these outsiders, because that's how they saw the ACA walkouts. You know, not people who had been with the ACA for 20 years, the moment they were critical, the moment they didn't lock step, they were outsiders and they needed to be silenced as rumor mongers, you know, people you couldn't and trust. So, and so from my perspective, again, at this point, was I was actually, I felt let down by everyone that had left because I felt at the time mm -hmm. that if there was any rectifying the ACA, then they'd be the ones to do it. Yeah. What I didn't understand is that it's not necessarily their responsibility to fight people that are willing to root them out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's only so much that a small group of people that are in positions of influence can do. Yeah. Yeah. So another thing that, again, that was, that was relevant to, again, when I was piecing things together at the end. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, another thing I noted was like for years after the um, people had walked out, they were uploading clips that very put, they specifically put focus on Jen and Tracy more than anyone else. Um, I also noticed that as they continued, and I was still getting comments, I still get comments to this day of people stating that they didn't even realize that, you know, Tracy, Jen, and Claire left. It's, it's just like, Mm -hmm. how much they kept the idea of like, okay, we're going to lose little people here and there. So it's like kind of spread it out over the longest period possible. So they don't go out and like search what happened, etc. Well, but it's also really hard to find it because they yeah. cut up each video that's, you know, two hours long mm -hmm. into like 15 clips. Yeah. And then they'll make clips of those clips and then react to those. You know, it's like, so it's like, there's so many clips of one show that the five seconds where something that's important is said is just buried. Yeah. Yeah. There's just so many little things that just went into just pretty much bulldozing. Like it's just tarmac 2019. They just completely paved over it and just tried to bury Basically, it. Basically they saw it as we're doing such good. Mm-hmm. That even if we cause a little bit of harm on the way, yeah, that doesn't outweigh the good that we're doing. And that was like such a church-like mindset. Mm -hmm. Like you people know, like John, he just couldn't like. And that's John Chelsea. I think Chelsea mentioned this as well. Um, they just couldn't like criticize the church at this point because it's kind of the same thing. It's just like, how can we talk and about these scandals? How can we talk about these scandals when we have no integrity? We have no ground to stand on you know right and there was a lot of fear of losing credibility mm -hmm. so it was weird because it was like they were worried about whether or not they were right or wrong it seemed to me yeah but they were also so concerned with whether or not it seemed like they were you know what their image was yeah it seemed like there was just as much concern over that mm -hmm. 
anyway, we should probably move on to some questions. Uh, we might have already yeah. answered a few of these. Um, the first one is, how did you first become aware of rationality rules and everything that went down in 2019? We kind of covered that um, when yeah, I was introducing I was that design. section. Uh, we yeah. covered your experience of the AC elections with Eric like pulling you aside and showing you the mm -hmm. list. Is there anything else you'd like to comment on in relation to like the elections or is that really it? Um, um, yeah, to be honest, I was so oblivious that there were certain moments like that that were rem remarkable to me that I kind of like, that I just kind of reminded myself, remember this, it might mm -hmm. be important later, mm -hmm. but then the rest of it was just so fuzzy because I just didn't know what was yeah. going on. Uh, same thing happened to me with like my first... Um, LGBT plus uh, conference in the UK, uh, like the student yeah. LGBT plus unions, like that conference, like the first conference I went to, I can remember nothing. Uh, not because I right. drink or anything, it's just there's so much going on and you don't so know much. how the system works yet. So you're trying to pay exactly. attention to everything. You, your mind doesn't know what to capture at the moment sort of thing. Right. So, yeah, that happens. Um, maybe you'd like to elaborate a little bit on more on what the narrative surrounding those who left the ACA. What terms were like they talked about in private behind closed doors? Because of course we all got the like public, oh, it was an amicable thing, but like were there anyone in particular that like Eric or Matt was worried that you might talk to um when things went oh. down? <laughs> Good question. Um so actually for the most part, once they walked out, the people that were there just didn't talk about them anymore. Okay. But I will say that, and I was so confused by this the entire time, because from all the clips that I had heard, Tracy had never said anything to me that was problematic. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it seemed odd to me that at all, like, and I was, I was like close friends with this group, with this, with Eric and V, with Thomas and Hannah and with Drew and Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, there, I was in with this group because of the quarantine. Um, we called each other, you know, we were the quarantine and we called ourselves like the gang, you know, and, um, I was really close with them. So I spent a lot of time with them in my own time. And I was confused how, at how often Eric would bring up Tracy randomly mm -hmm. and just try to discredit her for some reason or other. And I, it just like, it never, it never made sense to me one, why he was focused on her in any way. Um, but it seemed that it must have been because he was afraid that I'd start listening to her or something. I mean, Tracy is a very and then when I, person, so yeah, I can see why. Um, right, and and the thing is that even everyone else <clears> in the group <throat> didn't really comment on what he would say about her either, because I, I think that they all, I don't think that they had anything against her either, but it was like Eric, the only person he would mention was Tracy, and he would just try to discredit her. Yeah. And I was just like, that's, I just found that I always, even through all the times that I trusted him, I found that, that part odd. That's very suspicious. Like, it, it's, yeah. it's like, yeah, Tracy is one of those people that like, not, not to, put, to put on an idol, because I know she doesn't like that. But like, when you see how she conducts herself and she like, leads people through reasoning and how like, she is very... She's she's there's not there's she's nothing malicious person. about her. There's nothing malicious. There's nothing right. insidious or anything there. You know, well, she's always she'll, open she'll to even, being questioned. Um, <clears throat> she'll just... she'll even say that she she regrets a, a lot of things um, mm -hmm. that that drew people to that place. Um, and so I, I you know I feel bad for for anything yeah. that she regrets. You know, but 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 at the same time, she was a lot of what drew me there, and. It was because of how reasonable mm -hmm. she was. And so, yeah, so he just, I think, used that. Yeah. And tried tried to be as reasonable, but just <laughs> it didn't work. I mean, at that point, I, I was probably in no state to be approached because my physical and mental health was just degrading by the month. Like, the entire right. 2019 incident took period over six months. Sure, the first month was like the first video went out and then a month of me being completely hand off, but then it went straight to Telltale Atheist accusing me of starting violence at the Faithless Forum. Mm. And then it's five months after that. There was a point in 2019 I had a triple infection. Um I had all three. I had a viral bacterial and fungal at the same time because my immune system was just shot to hell um from constant exposure mm. to stress. 
one thing I'm just gonna pause if you want to take a little break and like relax in a little bit. I know I've sent you the questions before on Facebook, so maybe you want to look ahead of them. Um, something that people keep poking me to talk about because I kind of alluded to it and teased it, but then just kind of moved on. Uh, Jonathan Friedel. Uh, Jonathan Friedel is someone who sends a lot of secular YouTubers money. Uh, Thomas Westbrook is one of his biggest, you know, people that he supports. Um, in 2019, Jonathan Friedel came out and declared himself more than transphobic in response to my original video, the very soft video that dealt with the science first and did all of the things to try and make Woodford feel better about himself. Um, so yes, uh, he did that. And then Westbrook came out and defended him doing that, saying it wasn't actually, you know, he isn't actually transphobic. It was just part of a job interview to see whether the trans people he abused are worthy of patronage, to which another YouTuber who was like supporting the trans community at this time, uh, Goldus Cranium, um, asked him, was uh, Friedel one of uh, Westbrook's patrons? Which Westbrook lost it. Um, he began accusing Goldus Cranium of gaslighting him and all this, even though that's not what gaslighting means. Uh, and then I, we went back and we checked his videos, and sure enough, Jonathan Friedel is there every single month for a year. Suddenly disappears when Jonathan Friedel declares himself more trans than transphobic. But from what my sources tell me, Jonathan Friedel continued to give uh, Westbrook money via other means outside of Patreon. Um, so yes, that's the Jonathan Friedel. We'll be covering the Jonathan Friedel incident in the fourth video because uh, it relates to the person, the mainline series I am currently doing, uh, went on to defend uh, Westbrook's defense of Friedel. So that will come up. Um, but yeah, so that's just kind of kind of a little uh, nugget. We will be covering it in the fourth video in the mainline series I'm currently working on. So uh, back to the ACA. Um, I'm sorry, this is this is more of my own vanity. Uh, I know you kind of touched this, but like, is there anything particular that you can remember that was said about me at the ACA? I know you kind of talked about how I was just trained as being unnecessarily aggressive about things. Um, yeah, what did they that was say it. about like, did they, did they even like mention the scientific content or anything of my videos or was it just, I'm monster? <laughs> It, it was literally just, you're so manipulative, be careful being fooled by this person. Ah, yes, I'm manipulative. So it was almost like, a, almost like a, <laughs> yeah, exactly, almost like a threat, like if you believe them, then you're a fool kind then of Then you're thing. a bad person, um, which exactly, is interesting like, because of how certain people at the time love to accuse me of guilt by association. It's like, it's not mm -hmm. association, you are defending these people. Um, right. Yeah. So I, I would watch your video and I would just be confused. Mm-hmm. That, that's what I basically concluded. I was like, I, I, I don't understand what it is I'm supposed to be saying. I don't know what I'm actually saying. Like, I genuinely just, just, I didn't know what to take from it. That's fair. And the problem, the problem here is when you've also like come from a, you know, abusive background to a new community, especially a community that frames itself as like rational, logical skeptics, and all of the people around you are saying that this person is evil and manipulative and then you watch that mm -hmm. video yourself, there's always that nagging thought at the back of your mind of what are they seeing that I'm not, you know? Exactly. And that, that can, that what can am end I up missing? being a trap mm -hmm. in itself, you know? So right. it's, it's like, I want to make clear, like, again, I, I don't blame you or hold you this against you. I know how strong that narrative can be. When everyone else is saying mm -hmm. there's something here, you can't see it. Like, we are biologically pre-programmed to kind of just go with the group. Um, right. It takes a lot the good like push against that, which you did. You did do. Um, but again, this is this is baby. But it also and, yeah. It also had to be put to me to do. Mm. It's not something that I just randomly decided. I'm just going to be you know a better person, and this is how I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. um, but uh, yes, we talked you know, a few times before the stream, and you kind of mentioned that as you started to watch my content and get into what other people have said and reached out to a few other people, you began to have your own concerns about bigotry at the ACA, and you approached the people at the ACA about these concerns. How did they react to that? What was their response? <laughs> so, first things first, the pers there was a person who reached out to me that was a mod, a member and she had been volunteering for a while like as long as I had at least mm -hmm. um and 
she didn't live in Austin, but she was, you know, part of the online community. Yeah. And she was a trans woman. Mm -hmm. And basically she had had concerns about how some things were being modded um, and brought them to kind of the head of moderator. Mm -hmm. And well, the, the number one person was out for, I think, medical reasons. Like she had, she had a lot going on. Okay. And so the kind of like second in command was kind of taking over. And this person also happened to be one of my best friends at the time. Like we were very personally close. I'd shared a lot of personal things with this person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought, great, well, I just have to go to her. So we'll, we'll get this sorted out real quick. Yeah. This is, this is going to be easy and simple and fast. And so I was amazed when I basically said, okay, so what do we do when we have content that that's, you know, some moderators think are transphobic, but there's, there's disagreement. How do we basically sort this out? And basically I just got a lot of like, almost like cornering a person with a religious claim that doesn't really know how to back up what they're saying. Right. It was just really weird and kind of all over the place and defensive and, Evasive and like leaning questions yeah, it, all the way. It, it made me very quickly suspicious Mm -hmm. of one of my best friends and that made me almost angry like wait what are you not telling me yeah and so this put this person completely on the defense hangs up on me and i'm like whoa that escalated fast mm -hmm. so i end up trying again later and it just basically this this relationship had already been destroyed i'm like wow okay looks like i've got to talk to some more people so I eventually reach out to, you know, who I get a hold of the, the head moderator and basically say, you know, what do we do when there's disagreement about how to moderate? And and basically what it had come down to was, well, if I think it's bad enough, we take it off. And if it's not, then we leave it. Like there was no like actual rule that anybody could point to. There was no bylaws like there was no semantic reading that I could pick through. And so it was just kind of loosely interpreted and, and there was a lot of defense for, yeah, but we don't want to shut down all discussion and we don't want to be insensitive to the people that are just scared and questioning. And, you know, we don't want to hurt people's feelings, but the, the problem is that whose feelings they were concerned about hurting was ignorant people rather than marginalized people. Mm -hmm. um, and they, so basically what it was put to me was, it sounds to me like your passion isn't atheism anymore. It's trans people's rights. And so that's fine, but it just means that you need to find another community, basically. Wow. That's... That shares your interests, because that's obviously your passion. And wow. at this point, I had been out about a tra being trans, but I'm also starting to realize that part of why it took me so long to come out about being trans was because... I was under the impression, even being a part of this trans ally community, I was under the impression that I wasn't trans enough mm -hmm. to be out. I didn't want to steal the spotlight from actually trans people. Yeah. Because I thought, well, I'm non-binary, so I'm not fully trans. I'm only kind of trans. And there was such a misconception in my own head about what being trans is mm -hmm. that the people from the YouTube community helped me sort out in my head. And this is again, another reason that I trusted them because there was so much that they actually did help me with. Like V for example, is non-binary and they actually told me, you know, you're actually just as important for, to show why we need so much representation of trans people because there are non-binary people. Mm -hmm. So that was when I kind of got, you know, the guts to come out about being trans, but it's like, I'm thinking, you know, to, talking to this moderator, I'm like, but that's not, my passion <laughs> yeah. just because i'm trans doesn't mean does that mean that i have to become suddenly passionate about trans rights in order for anything to be done for trans people it also reveals that like this whole mindset is trans presence is a privilege it's like trans people don't have the right to feel safe like that that's largely what this boils down to like you are asking hey how, how can we make this space safe for trans people, you know, just make it so they can actually exist in the space. And they were repackaging that of, well, oh, that's like, you know, extra work and it's not really a right or anything. It's just like this special interest you have, you know? Yeah. It's... 
Yeah. It's, it'd be like having, I don't know, a pack of wild dogs roaming around the ACA campus. And like, if you, if you point this out that, hey, maybe we should call someone, like, do something about these wild dogs. They go, well, you clearly have a passionate interest in dog catching. Why don't you go join the dog catching society? Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's, it's, ah. Oh. Uh, um, Tracy commented, how would you have a community where only a narrow demographic is allowed to sit there and feel comfortable and safe? And yeah, that, that really gets yeah. to it. It's just, ah. Oh. Okay. So that basically made me kind of curious about the fact that but I was beginning to start to see the inconsistencies, right? The This community prided itself, not only mm -hmm. prided itself, was, but, but was making money and a reputation on asking hard questions and following through whether you like it or not, right? Mm -hmm. Proving themselves wrong, right? Doing the hard stuff. And I'm like, wait a second, y'all aren't y'all aren't doing that. So I'm like, okay, these people can tell you how they break down religion easily. That's fine. But I'm finding out that they genuinely, and I genuinely didn't didn't understand what it meant to be transphobic. Mm -hmm. And so I started. I mean, then I was suddenly on a mission. I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna find out for real because if I'm gonna be in this community and I'm gonna say that I'm asking the hard questions, I'm gonna actually do it. And I had a feeling I was gonna learn some things that I didn't want to learn because the fact is that I was becoming very comfortable in this community. Mm -hmm. I was pregnant. Um, I was receiving a lot of support from this community. Like I, there are so many experiences and uh, privileges that my kid has had at this point that he would not have been able to have if it wasn't for this community. So I'm super grateful for that. But then again, that just kind of muddied the water even more for me. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm getting all this support, but at the same time, I'm like, I have to know if this is actually a good community. Mm -hmm. And so I started one by one. I realized that I'm, I, I get very overwhelmed by group situations. I get very, deep into conversations and so I decided to kind of single each person out that I felt that I had any connection with and I started with Matt because he had the the, the loudest microphone yeah and, and he likes that microphone but he always complains and, about and it he's, he's always like oh people abuse me as the face of the ACA but I will not let anyone else be the face of the ACA it's... right and so I basically came to him and I was like I just, I really just, I kind of caught him off guard, but I hit him with it. I said, if, and I pressed if, I said, mm -hmm. I stressed if, if you were a transphobe, mm -hmm. what steps would you take to find out if that's true or not? Just break it down for me like you would religion. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked by how suddenly he started talking about other things and giving me these weird responses, a lot like, you know, just non-answers. And it actually, he was just doing so much talking and and re reacting that I ended up getting really frustrated at him and yelling, basically like, like, damn it, Matt. Like I had been told by so many people that you were gonna be resistant and not answer me on this. And I was the one to say, you know what? If you really ask him, he'll he'll tell you, you know, mm -hmm. he cares about people from what I've seen. He will, he will, he'll listen. Yeah. And then he's like sitting here not listening. And so I yelled at him for that. And that caught his attention, right? So he started mm -hmm. to be a little bit more quiet, actually started to kind of hear me out. And then next thing I know, it's like the next day and he's bringing his trans girlfriend over to my house to bring me diapers. And I had been trying to get him to come over for a while because we'd been living there for a few months. And mm -hmm. I thought we were friends and I thought he was going to kind of come over sooner, but he didn't. But Suddenly he's got the time and, you know, brings her over and and decides to have this discussion in front of her about how he's not trans. And I'm like, um, I mean, I'm really uncomfortable having this conversation about uh -huh. you in front of your girlfriend, <laughs> but sure, <laughs> you know, that's, that's just really fucking gross. And it, it, I'm going to again, we might we might cover this, we might not. It depends on like time and everything. Um, I was going to say one thing before I actually answer that. Uh, Charl Landsberg donated uh, 35 Zar. Thank you, Charl. It's very, uh, Charl, it's very much appreciated. Uh, I saw that you had to go, so take care wherever you went. Uh, but yes, uh, the way that he just wheels 
his girlfriend. I'm, I'm going to say girlfriend because like I I know her name. I, I don't want to say her name because I don't want her to associate with this. Like, right. He does this so much. He just uses her as a prop, and like mm-hmm. I feel bad not just for you but also for her. Like the fact that he's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sit you here and use you, so like it, it cordons off part of the conversation, sort of thing. It's just geez. well, and then she called me, tried to call me out, and basically cornered me, saying, "How dare you say that I'm in a relationship with a transphobe, and that you know you're assuming that I can't, I don't know any better, <laughs> or or like you're pitying me, and basically saying, how dare you assume that I'm that ignorant? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like. Well, first of all, you're assuming that anyone who's abused is ignorant. And I think that's just a really harmful yeah. way to look at it. Um, and second of all, even if you were, how is this an appropriate way to have this conversation? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not here to talk to you about how you need to live your life. I am here to figure out if Matt is the person that he's claiming to be in front of all of these people and benefiting from them. You know, like, it's a separate conversation. I also wasn't like personally her friend. Like mm-hmm. we'd we'd never really talked before that, you know. There's also like, a high. Like, that's a, also another. I don't need to take away, but there's also like a hierarchy involved. Um, with like being binary trans versus being non-binary trans. There's also right. that. Like you mentioned, you already had like this anxiety under the surface of like, well, I'm not trans enough. Um, so there's also that playing into everything. Uh, sorry, you were going to say something else uh, before I rudely interrupted. Oh no, that's that basically it. It was good. Um, it was just it was this was a very emotionally charged time for me because I'm like relationship is falling apart after relationship is falling apart after relationship is falling apart after I'd yeah. already lost an entire community, and so kind of like what I, this was around the time, and I'm I'm not sure if it happened before this or during this, but um, this same moderator had kind of put it to me um, and said. Do you, did you ever look back at the the events of 2019? Mm-hmm. And I was like, crap, no, I haven't. And she's like, you know, I'm not going to try to convince you of anything. Just just go look at those interviews. You shared your links with me, your your interviews with Kevin mm-hmm. Logan, and um, probably like some screenshots of Matt's uh, Twitter's tweets and some YouTube comments and stuff. Yeah. And, um. I was suddenly starting to see, and now I wasn't able to see to a level that I could explain to a skeptic who's prepared to try to debunk everything that I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I was uh, uh, potentially shut down um, by each person logically, um, because I think that the one of the biggest problems in this community at this point is that it had been so promoted to just just honor your left brain and just follow logic that's really Mm -hmm. the only thing that matters and it's like no i think we're denying like half of humanity here um by just not not even acknowledging that harm doesn't necessarily have to make sense to you Mm -hmm. for it to be harm yeah like that thought alone just I, I just don't even know if they accept that. It's, it's just like how many atrocities have been rationalized. Um, I don't know if I, I remember I mentioned rationalizing, like difference between reasoning and rationalizing like to you before the show. I don't know if I said it already in the show, but reasoning is like looking at the evidence and using it to reach a conclusion. Rationalizing is starting with a conclusion and like trying to make everything fit that. Like you look at when Christianity started to decline uh, it was secular science that was turned to, and like race science that was turned to to justify slavery. You know, um, oh, mm. you know, we divide all these people into different groups, and we even class orangutans as a type of person. Um, you know, and it's like, yes, we are rationalized empirical races, but the thing is, like, anyone can rationalize. Creationists can rationalize all the time. You see them doing this with, like, well, if carbon dating is, you know. It's, it's it's accurate then why does it say this fossil is only this many years old it's like because there's no carbon in it but they're still trying to rationalize they're still trying to like take little bits cherry pick the science pretty much to meet whatever conclusion they have decided upon um, right like they would follow their own advice and try to prove themselves wrong when it came to certain topics mm-hmm. but other topics didn't deserve the same level of scrutiny yeah <sighs> um, so 
Yes. Is anyone else you'd like to talk about, like your discussions with them? Because we talked about Matt and like how he reacted to you starting to question things. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone else that um, had a particularly strong reaction, like, or that you just need to vent. Yeah. About. So or there were, there was someone that I partnered with, mm -hmm. um, especially towards the end, because we we had very very similar personalities. Um, I felt really really, um, really close to this person, and. They wanted to do good things just like I did, you know, really wanting to do things for free. Right. So this is a person who clearly wasn't just trying to make money. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not they were trying to make a reputation, I mean, I'm, I couldn't say, but clearly we're not in it for the money. And so that's one of the reasons that I believed in this person. But I brought this person into the community um, and kind of validated them enough to get them onto some ACA shows uh, like like it's complicated basically I brought so I was part of bringing this person in and now they're still there and still completely hoodwinked and I feel responsible for that um and I, I I'm I, I'm not trying to name names. That's why I'm mm -hmm. I'm so like yeah. stuttery right now. It's because I'm I'm not trying to call people out. I'm just trying to that's point to problems. Um, well, um, that's a feeling that a lot of the ACA walkouts had as well. Um, it was kind of like uh, to, to to go into the nerd realm here. Uh, it was kind of like the Obi Wan call put out at the end of Revenge of the Sith, where like they sent out the the uh, Sith sent out. You know, Darth Vader sent out the uh, call for all Jedi to return back to the temple, but Obi Wan Kenobi is like rushed to like send out a signal sending Jedi to avoid the temple. It was just like it was such a mess, mm. um, you know. And all we can really do is, is talk and share these experiences and hope that other people learn from them, you know. Well, and that's why I want to bring this person up is is not that I think that this person is just super harmful themselves. But I do believe that they are participating in this unbeknownst to them. Because yeah. um, they, they put on fundraisers mm -hmm. uh, for, for people like um, they've done, um, what is it? The the organization, the call in, um, Daryl Ray. Oh, we used to recommend people to call them all the time. Fair enough, it's a um, helpline. <laughs> Recovering from religion. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and they did another one recently, mm -hmm. and I I kind of tuned in to see kind of if if each person that that I was close to is kind of still the, approaching things the same way or whatever. And I basically learned that um, Eric and V, who who ended up leaving the ACA and starting Skeptic Generation. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, we haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah. Um, um, they're they were on a hiatus, but are now going to be coming back. So I I see this as potential mm -hmm. harm, yeah. especially for young impressionable, well, not not necessarily young, but new to non-religion. You know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, there's impressionable always, people. Yeah, there's always this knock-on or ripple-out effect sort of thing, and like. Yeah, but when, when you've de been dealt like a bad series of events, you, you can often feel like you know, oh, if I if I'd done this or this instead, if I'd seen through the thing, if I'd like, oh, I'm currently dealing with that, and the person I'm currently dealing with, and how I very often say like, if I realized just how dangerous she was, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today. But uh, like that's right. the thing, you can only we can only act in the moment. It's it's very easy to like have the sort of hindsight. Um, but that said, it is like it's admirable that you're coming on and talking about this stuff because I know it can't have been easy, you know, just even approaching mm. me, um, like, that that took a lot. Um, you approached me in November of 2021, that, that, that took a lot. I, I remember yeah. our, we had <clears throat> we had a very awkward text exchange to begin <laughs> with, which might just be my thing. When I actually go back, I looked at the first way that I talked to Levi, because um, Levi had like no idea how I knew he was working on a video relating to somebody. And I just followed him. I was his first Twitter follower. It was a very awkward exchange. And it's like looking back at our conversation 2021 is, what do I say? You know, it, 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 right. it, takes, a, it takes a lot of courage to do that. You know, um, well, I had no idea 
how much harm I'd caused. I didn't know how much harm I'd validated. I, I just had no idea if you just hated me or just thought that I that I was just trying to, you know, get my arms around you. And I just, I just didn't know what to expect, but. Like, there's very few people that I view as actually like going beyond the mole event horizon during that event. Um, like, well, oh... but I also realized that I had, I had done a lot of talking and I, I needed to kind of prove that I was capable of listening because it mm -hmm. seemed like there were a lot of people who were just learning what the right things to say were. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I didn't want to, if I was that person, I didn't want to come off that way. I'd rather change, you know, get the chance to change that if I was that person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fair enough. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, we kind of covered when the cracks first began to appear. So like, <laughs> we, we've talked about how you started <laughs> questioning thanks to a friend who came to you and all this. Um, well, one thing, like... I, I kind of like spoke for you that I should, really shouldn't have done that. What was it like approaching you back in November 2021? Do you remember how you felt at the time? Like what was going through your mind? I, I... Shame. Oh, just just all the Catholic shame. Catholic. You know, like it's like I I had spent my my high school being a Catholic who was loud about being against abortion rights and loud about everyone should be Catholic and it's just like I felt a lot of shame for that which of course is endorsed okay. by Catholicism mm -hmm. and so it's like I just kind of went back to that where I was just like oh my God another thing to feel guilty about where I thought I was doing the right thing I thought I was doing you know, the best that I could. And so that was right and justifiable, but I didn't understand why you can believe in something passionately and really think you're doing the right thing mm -hmm. and it still be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like I just... like, it was like the second time. I hope at least our conversations at the beginning, like gave you some like relief from that. Again, Absolutely. Like, you were swept up in the middle of everything. I did not mean to catch everyone up in the shit show. It was just supposed to be me, Woodford, Woodford fix his shit. We move on. That's, that's all it was supposed to be. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> it did not end up going that way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I have no, but that wasn't, that wasn't your fault. That was, that was actually like orchestrated. <laughs> Okay. So it's that's definitely not your fault either. Yeah. Um, now another question: How have you been since you left the ACA? Um, I mean, to be honest, my my friend group has gotten really small, but at least I'm I'm given the chance to rebuild it and kind of choose who's in my life person by person and on character traits rather than by DNA. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of given me the incentive to build a community for myself of, in, you know, of people that I genuinely can tell that I can trust based off of their actions and how they treat me yeah. and how they react when I tell them how I feel about how they're treating me so that my kid can grow up not thinking that abuse is normal like I did. Yeah, that's always like breaking the cycle is always like, it's, it's, an it's, it's hard. One, one of the noblest things you can do. It is hard. It is very hard. You know, yeah. Um, because you don't, you don't have, like, I guess what something that I've been learning lately is, is I guess more about mirror neurons and just how easy that makes learning things when you can see it mm -hmm. first. And so when you're the first person to parent in a way that's not using shame and punishment and humiliation to teach, mm -hmm. it's really hard to come up with how to do that on your own. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah and in the moment. <laughs> so. But I mean, luckily, there's enough there's enough um, videos on like TikTok and stuff right now that you can see a lot of situations. I mean, there's there's help. Hmm. It's just again, it's it's another area of my life where I have to try to parse through the shit out of the brownies. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because it's that's what I'm I'm learning. I I thought that there was like you know bad people and good people, right? Hmm. Yeah. But 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 it's not like that. It's very gray. Like there are definitely <laughs> yeah, people there's... there are definitely people who have gone over the mole event horizon, but that's not the vast majority of them. Um, right. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's just complicated. That's, that's fair enough. We have an audience question. If anyone else in the audience has any questions, uh, I should probably should have done this like ten minutes ago. Like now is 
probably the best time to ask them. We'll answer these and depending on how you feel going forward. Um, I only have one audience question from the uh, promo video I put out because uh, there were a few that were similar to the ones I'd already like written down to ask, etc. Um, and depending on how you feel afterwards, I don't know how you're with work, etc. What your time frame is. Uh, if you want, we can kind of do a little analysis of Matt Dillahunty's reasons for leaving the ACA. Um, <laughs> I find it to be difficult. honest i had already left by that point so i really that's i fair. couldn't say that's fair we can yeah, still respond I, to I we can still respond to the uh comment that he put out because like i didn't yeah. mention that to tracy i will probably end yeah. up doing a video on matt's um hypocrisy regarding the aca stuff then because it's just so fucking critical and it just infuriates <laughs> me uh yes but the question comes from sideways 5153 do you find that the culture of debate and logic in the atheist community is a detriment to constructive discussion? I found that the structure of debates generally lends itself to hostile, aggressive environments which are slow to make progress and often start to drift towards more authoritarian outlooks. We'd love to hear how the marketplace of ideas impacted your experience in this community. And I think we've kind of touched on this in many little different ways. Um, um basically... Yeah, I mean, we did touch on it in the sense that it kind of reinforced mm -hmm. logic thinking and, and ignoring emotion. Yeah. Um, but, well, there was something I was going to say to else that. I so, kind um, of, it might, might, might pick your memory, but something else I remember mentioning like a couple days ago when we had like a pre-show talk um, is the way that, sadly, in a lot of these sect communities that are self-declared skeptics, in the same way that, like, Christianity has taught, you know, its followers that uh, we will be uh, oppressed and, you know, that is proof that our doctrine is right, you know, Christianity, like, Jesus said you will be oppressed sort of thing. Uh, and the same way that criticism to them feels like oppression and kind of drives that religious fervor, uh, with the skeptic community, this assumption that they are always rational, that they're not emotional, um, they often drive the same sort of like bunkering down. Like we saw this with Woodford in how he didn't take one swing at the trans community in 2019. He took no less than three attempts at the science each time he fucked up. Um, but he was just so sure of himself that he could rationalize anything to be because like he couldn't be wrong. He is a skeptical man with the uh, what was the the card game he published was uh, fallacies. He he. <laughs> published a fallacies card game which is literally just like bog standard calling out fallacies it's just yeah there, there, there is this kind of driving of like i am so skeptical therefore i cannot be wrong when that's not being skeptical skeptical is actually having the ability to look and to like investigate your own beliefs genuinely questioning them which is scary especially like for someone like you with you just found a community after you, you know, you'd lost, you moved away from your previous community, you'd found a community that you thought you belonged to and you felt like, you know, I can do this. You, you still have the strength to do that on your own, not because of the ACA, but in spite of the ACA, I'll have to say. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I just went on yeah. a tangent there. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, it's just something that they don't realize is that they're leaving a group of people that only allows black and white thinking mm -hmm. um i'm not saying that th that's true of every religious group but it tends to be true of the people that end up at the aca mm -hmm. right and so what they don't understand is that using only logic is just another way of putting things into black and white thinking yeah right it's not mm -hmm. it's not all or nothing mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's, it's, they just, and I couldn't see that at the time. It also removes the community from the community. Because, like, community is not logical. It is emotional. It is attached. It is, you know, a mess of emotions, you know. So, you know, it's just, God. There's... Yeah, there's a lot of misogyny um, that was put on any kind of marginalized group that was saying anything, it, they would react, oh, basically just just like how women, you know, oh, they're crazy. They don't know what they're yeah. talking about. Anyone criticizing Woodford was immediately called out as like emotional or hysterical, yeah. especially for Tracy, Jen, and Claire. 
Um, but like he can compare himself to fucking Galileo being judged by the Inquisition, you know, like that. Yeah, that's yeah. a normal thing. That's rational, you know. That that that's fine. <sighs> Again, is it's just there's always two sets of rules, like one for the in group, one for the out group, and a large part of the in group at the ACA is this bro culture, which is a culture that like. Claire and other people had joined the board specifically to break up when they joined, because before then it was also a very homogenous, you know, all cis guys. Um, you know, and a big part of that is, yes, the, this assumption that a man's emotions are all rational by default, you know, as, as the normal reaction. But uh, the emotions of anyone else, yeah, completely different thing. Um, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen any questions coming in, so I guess we'll just shoot the comment with uh, Matt Delante. <laughs> I really hate this comment. Uh, this is yeah. one that we saw regularly. Um, in response to someone pointing out that Matt Dillahunty was booted from Freefort Blogs for vocally supporting violence against trans women, uh, he responded with, "Quote." You're a monumental idiot, getting information from other idiots. That action wasn't because of any of my positions. I'm, I'm not only an advocate and an ally, I'm dating a trans woman and calling out Dawkins and others. Go, lo go learn something so you, don't look, so you don't look so fucking stupid. End quote. Oh I'm God. sorry. I, reading abilities, like, especially with like mm. this, it's just like... And I, we, we were gonna have, I was gonna have the big like display of this, but I, I see Tracy as I already said that like Gen people pointed the fallacy out of this very quickly, um, and that's the facts that you know, the vast majority of misogynists are heterosexual cis men, you know. Yeah, uh, the, it's... the last the last contact that I had with Matt was before I deleted my Twitter. Hmm. and it was so he had said something about blocking the the mod actually that brought this all to my attention right. so he knew that yeah. she had created a stir he lied about her quite a bit as well um oh other, yeah other trans um, other trans people at the aca as well he, he had a habit right. of like lying about them um well he'd said something like um like if if um if you think that i silenced you or something mm -hmm. like that, then you never really had a voice in the first place. Jesus. And I'd said, and I I, I tried to do it gently. Like I, I'd like to put a heart in there trying to soften it or something. But I was like, I think that's kind of the point mm -hmm. that, yeah. um, that you're hogging the stage this, essentially. This is something Claire, Tracy and Jen talked about in their interview with Kevin Logan quite a bit. Um, right. The way He's... that like we, the non-privileged people, you know, in whatever way we are, are taught, you know, from birth. So just you to always expect... give way to the white cishet man. Yeah, you know, you because give they have a right to speak. Yeah, like, <laughs> you, you talk to people, like, it's, we see it in, like, the um, the studies that check, like, who speaks more, men or women, even though both, even in situations where both men and women say that they spoke about the same, it's always men speaking far more than the women, you know? Yeah. And that's because... And like... I noticed... You... Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, but I noticed that as I was leaving, that they were replacing everyone with with hmm. cis, white men. <laughs> like... Yeah, I had a look at the ACA and, like, the preparation for the show, and it's they just given up. Yeah. Like, the people who could extract what they could eric v shannon q yeah matt they extracted everything they could yeah. they mined the aca's integrity for all it was worth and now that it's, it's finally died it was a long death i was not mm -hmm. hasty in like my statement the death of the aca it just right. took a long time to fizzle out they extracted all they could all blood all mm -hmm. vitality before moving on and they're now all doing their own things um yeah yeah they were just trying to make a name for themselves and that's sadly the way it is because again like they start the board with fucking youtubers it's like oh but ethel aren't you a youtuber it's like i hope my history has shown that i don't go around just making shit for no fucking reason um 
you know. Yeah, and I'm just like, I, you know, yeah, it would be cool to make a name for myself being some kind of honorable person, but this is clearly mm -hmm. not the way to do that. This is yeah. it's, it's a that when there's an entire community of people that can't stop trying to tell you how harmful you're being, like, yeah. God, yeah. at what point do you listen? Like, <laughs> it, it's all for it, they all serve the algorithm now. That, uh, they're it. all serving their interests that's the thing is if you're wondering what these people individually will do mm -hmm. it is whatever they think will benefit them in the long run yeah. and i go back to the way that they treated me during the month where i gave woodford the very handoff approach again at the time i was the hottest shit because i was rehabilitating woodford i was healing woodford they all suddenly wanted a piece of me but the moment he decided to go ahead and compare himself to Galileo and show us that he didn't actually think he was wrong overall, he still wanted to strip trans women of those six fundamental human rights, and I took issue with that, suddenly I became enemy number one. Because if I took him out, that means all of them would be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They could be held to their actions, you know? Um, right, and then there's a then there would be a question mm -hmm. in the future when people find their content about whether or not they're trustworthy, and they just couldn't have that. Yeah, no. So they just they just needed to put an end to me, <laughs> which uh, and they would tell people like me, yeah, you don't want to double down because that's bad. As they're doubling down on things, <laughs> like they're telling me all the things that they think that I want to hear, which which I did, you mm -hmm. know, I, I wanted to hear those things, but I didn't understand what it looked like when when you're a hypocrite. <laughs> just it was such a mess and like just going through everything again like i'm doing with like the mainline series i've gone through everything i approached this like four different ways in the past like from december 2019 i was already working on the series that i'm currently publishing but it just took me so long to heal and to refocus and figure out what's actually important to me um and that's what i'm currently working on but at the same time there are other things that i do need to talk about you know levi's emails deserve their their time your story deserves its time and that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to go through and help as many people in this way as i can but uh yeah can i just say what my fear is what's your fear <laughs> overall and, and one of the main reasons that i'm doing this is that like yeah it seems like to me, at least, you know, skeptic generation seems to have fizzled a bit and um, YFNA has fizzled a bit. And there's been, you know, I've been seeing less posts by Holy Kool-Aid and, and uh, GMS. But ultimately, I my fear is that these people have just distanced themselves from each other enough to wait for things to die down and for mm -hmm. enough new people to come in for this to not be talked about anymore. And then nobody can find the connection between them anymore, and they can just kind of try again. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm trying to archive everything in my main right. series. It's like I'm backing up. I'm even mirroring other people's videos, which a certain someone decided to try and flag my channel for, down for DMCA, only to find out that actually I can mirror, mirror full videos. There are legal copyright exemptions that allow you to mirror full videos, and I have won those appeals. Um, so it's got to wait 10 days and then I'm out of the jail cell, which is kind of nice that the stream also fell in between there. So, <laughs> but, um, they are, a lot of people are very desperate to bury their evidence. Uh, and again, I, I'm now I'm, I've, I've watched Matt's, uh, why I left the ACA video in preparation for this. I've got so much I want to say on that. So I'm going to have to do a video on that. There's a few other videos that I've got to tie up loose ends as well. But, mm. um, I also want to say that I do... I do still have my channel up mm -hmm. um, and I have a lot of footage on there while, while I've always come from a place of the best intentions. Again, mm -hmm. I, we've discussed already why it's problematic to speak from ignorance. And so I'm sure that there's a lot that I've said in my own content that's mm -hmm. problematic, whether it's simply misgendering people to, to having just, you know, outright harmful ideas. I, I am just, completely unaware at this point and there's so much footage that it's impossible to go through it all um so it'd probably just be probably just be better just take it all down um but i almost want to I, I guess at this point I'm, I'm leaving it up one because i'm not necessarily sure how to about how to go about taking down that much stuff mm -hmm. and i have so much on my plate that that's difficult for me but also i i don't want it to seem like i'm 
running from anything. I kind of want to be able to own anything that I have right. said. If anyone does call me out, I want it to still be out there. I have been on YouTube since 2011. Let me help you. <laughs> I would appreciate that. Um, I have that. <laughs> content which, like, especially in my early days, this is 2011, 2012, 2013, I had a lot of internalized ableism. I use a lot of ableist language. Sometimes even in the titles of my video, words like stupid, moron, you know, stuff like this language I've since moved away from. Uh, what I've done is I have actually stratified all my content on my channel to generations and I have playlists. You can unlist your videos, add them to a playlist. And on that playlist, you can put in the description a full disclaimer saying that, hey, Ooh. These videos were created at a time I was new to these topics. I was still exploring a lot of these things. I do not agree with these. And you should not like, you should not take the presence of go. these videos as like implicit agreement or whatever. Um, right. And that allows you to continue making content and it keeps everything archived. That's again, what we've done with Essence okay. of Thought. Um, e e all of my old videos, my very first video on YouTube is viewable <laughs> on my first playlist. It's um, yeah, first gen playlist. So, uh, well, there's also a bunch of uh, Ethan and Jenna footage. We had a channel together, okay. and I actually did not personally control that channel. Mm -hmm. um, I actually don't even know if I could get in there at this point. Um, and we're not talking to each other. Um, mm. So that's kind of complicated, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's actually probably the most stuff. problematic oh. channel because we discussed mental health. Mm -hmm. That's, Our topic for yeah. mental health and blank. And there's even one episode that I can think of right off the top of my head where it was like mental health and black people, right? Where we had some black content creators come on and tell us what their experience was around the subject of mental health, right? Trying to validate them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was even problematic. I recognized during that episode because I'd said something that was racist and I didn't understand it. They called me on it, which I appreciated, but I was so clearly uh, uninformed about how to have discussions with people that I hadn't listened to enough before um, to understand my own racism. Mm -hmm. And then like got all pouty and kind of like internalized it and kind of went like, but I'm not a bad person, right? Like really had this weird moment, even on that episode where I'm like, okay, I, I was just super irresponsible and just, it's just problematic and I, I feel bad. That's, that's fair. Um, but again, it's not about me. <laughs> yeah. And again, that is fair. And the thing is like, you can learn, you can move on. I know the narrative Absolutely. around 2019 is that I was holding Woodford's feet over the coals and I was never going to forgive him. But, you know, I gave him a month to fix things. Uh, someone else, uh, the person relating to the mainline series, whose name I'm still not going to mention, uh, she hearted a comment offering to break my knees at the height okay. of the ACA abuse. So, like, we were seeing absolutely horrific shit being said on the public forums. She hearted a comment offering to break my knees. Clearly a joke, but, like, at the time, it's like, hey... Should we really be like hearting or favoriting comments offering to hurt trans people at a time when they are facing an incredible amount of violence? Um, she publicly came out and apologized for it. I say, Oh, you know, I've been defending it, and I say, Yeah, I can see how it could have been seen by certain people. Never mentioned me by name, gave a general apology. I never brought it up again, not even in my later video in which I tackle said person. I never brought it up again, not until the video that'll be coming out next Saturday. Uh, because in her in her email response to Levi, uh, she withdrew her public apology and said she didn't understand what what was wrong with hearting a comment offering to break a trans person's knees, mm. and that she still didn't see an issue with it. She had just said sorry because she thought it, and it's like I've got evidence here now that I accept apologies and move on, but you very clearly couldn't because like this is months after I just accepted her apology, blocked her, and moved on. It's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's yeah. just... <clears throat> no, it's okay. There's a lot to get through. But, uh, yeah. yeah, that's it for questions that I have. No one else seems to have any other questions. There's been a few about, like, Jen and Tracy, but they've been both answering their own questions down below. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Anything that you forgot to mention that you feel like you want to talk about? Any notes that you've made that you haven't been able to get to? Um, 
just that I guess I'll, I'll just share kind of what I've mostly taken away from this. And it's that this, these topics tend, it seems to me, to draw in people that are very passionate people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you're a passionate person, it's very hard to draw your own boundaries, mm -hmm. especially when you don't have experience doing so yeah. and they've been drawn for you. So I guess if you're in that kind of a position um, where you're questioning things and you feel scared and alone, when you find people that you trust immediately and a lot right away, try to remind yourself that you get passionate about things <laughs> and that all humans are easily fooled. Yeah. And I guess that's, that's really what I took away from it because I had, I had, again, been under the impression that I was just a good judge of character and I just, I had gotten myself as far as I had and, and I'd be able to tell if something was wrong right away. And I just, I was fooled. Um, so just, and at this point I can, obviously I need to remind myself, I can still be fooled. So, um, that's what I just try to remember from now on is that there, there's some, whether it's hard to believe or not, there are some people out there with agendas that do not have my interests in mind yeah. good. or even people that I, that especially people that are not necessarily as you know out in the open as i am like i have opportunities to expose myself to people um, to build a community but there's a lot of people who are not given those experiences or chances because they either don't have the time or they don't have the resources to get out and it's kind of isolating so it's like who's representing those people who who gives a crap about those people and it's like well unless we all start to talk about those people like how are they going to be seen and if we're only concerned with ourselves Who's going to care for the people who can't fight for themselves? And so that it, that's ultimately my goal is to start doing more of that. That's a noble goal. And it's good advice as well. Again, hopefully this uh, stream has been cathartic for you in some way. And I hope everyone in the audience has uh, learned something, picked something up. If you could, you know comment that would be great i'm not gonna lie i'm <laughs> i'm a little bit nervous about any kind of retaliation because i have named some names mm -hmm. and i have been very specific and not exactly very charitable towards some people that the last contact that we had was at least amicable mm -hmm. um so i'm i'm not gonna lie i'm at this point well slightly nervous yeah. because these people know a lot about my personal life they know where i live i mean i'm not saying that they're going to come and attack me i'm just saying i just don't know what to expect <laughs> yeah. I, I get that feeling like, i literally published a video on the person like doxing aca members and then she forced me to give me her give me like give her my personal address so i, I get that yeah. um, it's, it's yeah. yeah um but like you're not alone there's a lot of people here watching and the thing is by having this out there and talking about it like there's now you've had your share of the story there's something for people to gather around if anyone attempts anything like i will be in your corner immediately i, I know others will as well so like you're not alone in this um we will like and if i if there's anyone that's still confused about something that maybe i've left out or maybe i need to elaborate on more please feel free to reach out to me um I'm I'm on Facebook most. Um, Messenger is probably the easiest way to reach me, although I don't necessarily respond to everything in a timely fashion, but I'll probably respond, and um, especially if I know to look out for it. But Same for me. If there's anything that anyone's got a question, probably the best place to get me is on Discord. I pretty much always answer the questions there about certain things. Uh, you just sometimes have to tag me and scream at me for a bit, but uh, yeah, I will get there eventually. <laughs> oh, real quick before we wrap it up, I just saw oh. a comment that I, I think we should elaborate on a little bit at least. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, is, Ian J. A. Green says, I want to know more about what ended up happening with Eric and B. <clears throat> Thing is, I left and basically from that point on have had zero contact with, with like 99% of these people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what exactly happened mm -hmm. to the group that I was a part of, but it was a group when I left. Um, I think from what I've seen scattered around YouTube that it's somewhat drifted. Mm -hmm. um because they're in different places like i eric and v moved to portland um and i think that they're trying to build a new community 
Um, so I would be on the lookout for them. Thing is, they're, they basically succeeded in what, what they were aiming to do, which was to create their own AXP and reap the benefits financially. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's an argumentative atheist's dream to make your living off of arguing with people. Yeah. Um, and so all that I can say is that I don't trust them. <laughs> I guess that's really all I can say. I can't tell other people what to do or what to see or what to think. I can just say I don't trust them. Mm -hmm. Or Thomas or Drew, um, unfortunately. Drew actually made a video. So Taylor had come over to my house to talk to me about why I was leaving. And she was telling me things like, Taylor is Drew's wife, by the way. Uh, she was telling me things like, oh, yeah, like I understand. And she was super empathetic and man, that's really hard. And it's tough to be in your situation. And then also kind of put it to me like, yeah, but like we make our living doing this. And I just kind of didn't really say anything to that. Yeah. Um, she kind of reassured me. Yeah. But, you know, you always have us. We'll always be your friends no matter what. And that's literally the last contact that I've had with her. Um, but then since then, he a genetically modified skeptic put out a video talking about the problems that he saw in the atheist community. And it was a lot of what I had told Taylor. Um, and I think that it was his way. And I, again, this is speculating, but from what I know of him and, and having gotten to know him personally and loving him as a person, and I still don't think that he's intending harm. I think that he's actually avoiding those tough subjects, mm -hmm. not only for himself, but to avoid harm. But the fact is that I think that he put that out as a way to kind of um solve his guilt yeah 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 i say a lot of that <laughs> it's yeah like, it's just like people it's funny how these people were like oh you know i can't do this it'll lose me money but then they go oh well i can't do anything else i can't do anything that will get people like ethel to like actually accept my apology it's like you could prioritize not hurting people or supporting those who do over your personal gain that's literally right. it you know these people want all of the reward the praise of being such a good person without putting their money where the mouth is it's yeah mm -hmm. yeah but uh yes that's a rather poignant note to end on uh is that everything or i think that's it Okay, well, uh, thank you for be... being on. Uh, I know everyone else has appreciated it. It's been wonderful. The stream will still be available. Uh, hopefully the audio is good. Um, it's been a while since I've done this. I fixed the camera. The camera doesn't make me look like a, a, a I don't know, a bleached white golf ball. <laughs> uh, I sorted the camera out. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you for coming on. It has been a wonderfully cathartic experience talking with you, and I know it's going to mean a lot to a lot of people. So yes, uh, if you want to say goodbye to everyone, feel free to say goodbye. Thank you all so much. Take care. Take care, everyone, and I shall see you around. <laughs>